I'm really happy to have everyone on the call. What I wanted to go over with today is really important, and it's all about just making sure that campaigns, the whole process, right, that the, the whole cycle or journey that we take and you and, and, and the agency will take these clients on, right? It's a journey before they even sign up or you sell, sell anything. And I just wanted to, to try to clear up some things here to, to, to help you out. Every agency does it differently, right? That's how it works. And we know that. And, and, and providing you these tips here um, for setting a client's expectation for any service, it's fundamental, right? It's important. And it can be tricky sometimes because there's all different types of clients out there. So we put a, you know, a list together uh, to, to explain, you know, giving you a couple tips to avoid the pitfalls, right, of certain things that can happen in the beginning of the of the stage of of the client right when you just you when you're prospecting when you're talking to that client and all the way to the deliverables right the actually creating the pro uh, having us create the project and, and and deliver the goods um you know the services to your clients um so it's really important to uh, to go over these different tips so the first tip that i wanted to share with you which is really important is you need to identify the type of client you're working with. And it might sound, um, you know, repetition or kind of obvious about that, you know, that this is something that this is, is something that we all should know. But a lot of times, you know, if you're talking to, if you're pitching a client or, and they're giving you a really hard time and they're a pain in the ass and, and it's just like, you know, just really difficult and, 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 you know, it's like they fight you on everything. It's it's important to understand the type of client that you're working with. You want to be aware of this early enough. So do you want to make a decision if you want to either work with that client or not, right? I mean, depending on, you know, their attitude or, you know, you, you will understand what I'm saying when you come across one of these clients one day. Maybe you haven't yet. Maybe you have. But it's important to understand it. So when your agency is hired for a project is because the client sees you as an expert. However, there is no guide for how to be a client. We don't, there are, because they're so different that every one of them are so unique. So therefore it's in your best interest to learn how to manage them. Identifying the type you're working with can help you better deal with them and tackle the issues such as a scope creep. For example, let's consider the curious client, right? There's all different types. This type of client is generally interested in your work and wants to be involved as much as possible. They'll often ask you, you know, tons of questions and request multiple reviews over the course of the project. You'll want to start by understanding their working style and setting limits or boundaries in your contract. What we're saying is from the beginning, if you're getting someone that's asking thousands of of questions. You've been on all these different Zoom calls with the client and tons of emails back and forth. And they're just like so curious and anal about every little thing. Well, make sure that you dot your I's and cross your T's and you're, you're going to need to set a serious limit or boundary with this client in the contract, you're going to have to set their expectations and exactly, you know, deliver, not deliver, but provide them with all the deliverables, make sure that everything is in the contract. So then that way they do not steer off that path, that road. They're not creating their own project. Agencies deal with clients like this all the time where they have no boundaries they have no limits. It's never enough. They always want more, but they don't want to pay for more. Getting to identify the client is really important in, in the game that we're in. Another co common example uh, of a client is the know-it-all. This type generally thinks they can do your work better than you and won't hesitate to let you know it. There, there, there's also the underling who is devoted to the project and provides instant feedback. However, the lack, they lack the authority 
to pr approve anything. You want to manage this by ensuring you know the key stakeholders so you keep the project from stalling. Regardless of the type of client you're working with, they're usually effective steps you can take to help to, to manage this relationship in a healthy way. The key is identifying and anticipating their needs. Well, there's two things we're addressing here. One is the client that you spoke to on the phone and they think they know it all. They're better than you. They'll design everything better than you. They do everything better than you. And, and if, again, we've been in the business. We know. If someone is like that, you got to be really careful because no matter what we provide, it's never going to be enough. They can always do better. So you have to be careful. Again, put it in the contract. The other one is when business owner takes a back seat and then has someone that will jump in and basically make your life a miserable hell. Not understanding anything about the industry, not understanding about what the expectations you set with that client, everything that you've spoken about, all those hours that you spent with that client, and then you have someone that knows nothing about anything and they will stall the project and, and, and not follow the proper process because there's a process for everything that we do and they have to feel you know, and, and, and a simple example is they're managing a website project for their boss and and you're in the base camp with the project manager that we assigned to you you know we provide the first first draft first revision the second revision and the final that's those are the different stages that we take a client for web design they they always have those revisions and then all of a sudden, you know, at the final revision, this person that doesn't know that, hey, this is the final and that's it. And any edits after the final will have to have to provide a quote for that. They, they just say basically, well, after they have proved everything, I want, you know, the, I, I want to make all these different changes to the site. I don't like it, blah, blah, blah. And maybe they saw something online that they like better or whatever the case may be. Again, all I'm trying to do is prepare every one of you, and, and to have it always in writing to back yourselves up. Understand who you're dealing with here so they don't make this process miserable, right? It's always a happy process when you have, when you set the client's expectations and goals and all that stuff, you know, it's, 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 it's easy. It gets all mucked up and screwed up when the, the agency does not communicate the actual project and, and the deliverables and the timelines and the processes and the procedures and the client comes in and they know nothing about it. All right. The next thing, there's another great tip, establish the client's goals and objectives for the actual product uh, project. You'll want to get the client to articulate their goals and objectives for the project. This can help you sort out project expectations and might involve learning about their company, target audience, business model, and more. This is a hurdle you want to cross early as it can ensure that your design fulfills or surpasses the original uh, vision or our social media campaigns or SEO campaigns. Once you have the list of all the necessary details, you'll definitely want to include them in the brief or proposal. This part here is establishing the client's goals and objectives. It could be in the beginning of the process where you even close the sale. Truly understanding what their goals and objectives are and relaying that message in detail to us to provide you with a quote. Because if you leave out certain things that are really important and we provide you a quote and then we're doing the actual campaign for the client and you forgot to include some of their goals and objectives, the client is going to be like, well, wait a minute, you know, I expected this and I expected that. Now it becomes a problem after the fact, right? We're in the we're in the design phase or the deliverable phase. We've written content, we've created a, you know pages on a website, we've done SEO, we've done graphic design. It's important for you to uh, handle these issues and really dig deep and, and communicate really well and try to get as much information as you can and forward that to us. So when we do provide you with a marketing strategy, a proposal, or a quote for any of the services, it's exactly what that client wants, right? It's going to meet their goals and objectives for that actual product. It's really, really important. All right. So when it comes to setting and managed uh, client expectations, it's helpful, helpful to anticipate their needs. 
this can take time that you're listening, that you're asking questions, right? Don't ever take answers at face value. Instead, consider how each concern might affect the project and follow up with more questions if necessary. Once you know, once you have all of these, um, you know, once you've done all of this and you've really created this great relationship, then and you know everything about them and they know everything about you and what the project, you know, what the project is going to be um, and all the goals and the, and the deliverables and the processes and the procedures, then it becomes really simple to deal with a client like this because, hey, you guys are on the up and up, you know, with each other. And there's there are going to be no surprises, right? If we handle clients um, in a way that is professional, that we should be professional, they should, um, you should have a simple, streamlined, and happy project, happy client that, that is going to give you referrals and, and reviews on you know Google or wherever it is that you ask them to review you, right? Because that's really what the end of it is. Um, one thing I can tell you is that we never have unhappy clients, and that's really the most important thing, just never. Um, we will always make it right. We're not perfect, but we will always make it right. No matter what, we'll do whatever it takes to make them happy. Clearly define project deliverables. Again, I've been touching this almost on every slide. Once you establish the goals and objectives of the project, the next practical step is to define all the required or expected deliverables. We make that easy for you because we provide you with those deliverables. Set realistic expectations and be transparent about what can be accomplished. Sometimes we have newbie agencies come to us and say, this client wants to do advertising. What can we guarantee them? What do you mean? What can we guarantee them? I can guarantee them two things, death and taxes. It's about it, right? I mean, on an advertising campaign, it's difficult. You can't really guarantee anything. It's Can you guarantee they're going to get a nice site? Yeah, we're going to build them a beautiful site. They're going to be really happy. But can't be disingenuous, and I'm not saying anyone on this call will ever be. You can't talk about, you know, hey, you're going to have an ROI of 30, 40, 50, 100% because we built you a killer website. They, they're going to get a return on their investment because I can guarantee you this, it's going to be a lot better than what they have now a thousand times. But we can't give exact numbers. It, there are so many variables there. What type of industry are they in? Where are they located? What's their offer? How competitive is their market? What we can do is work really hard to increase their online presence, which will generate more income for that actual business. We always we get this question once in a blue moon. How many leads can you guarantee that you're going to produce on a Facebook campaign? Well, we can't tell you that right now. We might be able to tell you that like in 90 days. After we optimize their campaigns and we've been working on them for a while, then yeah, then we could start talking about an ROI because we have data. Now, now you have something that you can actually work with. If you have a, an optimized website, if your content is awesome, if you're pumping out blogs, of course, your rankings are going to increase if you're doing everything by the book, if you're listed everywhere, if you have a great social presence and you're posting, if you have a great rep, if, if, we, if we we're building your reputation or the client's building their reputation, then yeah, it's always going to increase, right? Always it's going, always going to increase, never going to go down, only up. Another thing that's really important is to clarify the limits of the project and make sure the client is aware of aspects such as timeline and scope. And I'll give you two examples. We're doing SEO and we started the campaign and the client wants to be on the first page of Google on month one. That's not going to happen. We all know that, right? Uh, that's, that's one way to look at it. You could look at us providing the timeline, like, okay, for the, because we always give you that information. And some of you might know, some of you might not. Stage one for an SEO campaign, 48 hours we're going to need you to fill out this form within 48 hours and send it back to us. The next step, and I'll show you guys, you know, I'll give you a kind of an example. Then the next step, the next stage would be, you know, we're going to do a 
keyword, re, we're going to do a keyword analysis, you know, um, and 48 hours, you're going to receive that keyword analysis after we, we received your intake form, you know, um, and then we need that back in 48 hours, right, from the client. So timeline is really, really, really important on both ends. It's us delivering the goods and them understanding what that timeline is. So they're not asking you what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next, which happens, right, when agencies don't provide a timeline for the client, but we took that out of the agency's hand. Now the project managers will supply the timeline and it's, we've been doing that for a long time. Um, and that just takes that out of your hands, right? Hey, here's a timeline. That way they won't ask our project manager a thousand times, what's next, what's next, what's next, right? Important. Um, and they'll know every single month what's going to happen, when it's going to happen, when do we need the information by. Timeline, important for, for all of you to understand that your clients need to respond to the project managers. They need to get back or you need to get back. So there are two case scenarios here. One case scenario is we have a project, uh, a project created, you sold a project and we're dealing directly with the agency or we have the agency brings on the client, agency disappears, and we're not disappears like gone forever, but really not being interactive. We need that information back at a certain time. You know, if we send you a first draft, we need it back, I don't know, 48 hours, 72 hours, not three months from now. The client pays, pays the agency, agency pays us. We set up the, the project in the project management platform. Client fills out the forms. We start the process. Here's the first draft. Where's the response? It's not our job to, to harass your client for the actual first draft, for the comments on the first draft. Or if we're creating content and we gave you guys 10 blogs or five blogs for your client to approve that content, it's important for you to communicate, to, to check your base camp, you know, and call your client. Hey, what's going on? We're not hearing back from you. There's a timeline here. And this is like one of the most important things that I can talk about tonight is having the client get back to you and the project manager in a timely fashion, getting it done quickly and not sitting there and having us wait. Because what we do is we will not wait. We take it and we go to another project. And then your client comes back 30 days, 60 days later, and he wants it yesterday, or she wants it yesterday, and you're going back to the to the end of the, of the queue. You can't just drop everything we're doing when the client decides, hey, I'm ready now. Again, it's about managing the expectations of the client. That's the other thing that is so, so important is the scope of work. We're going to promise the client, or you're going to promise the client, that these are the deliverables and this is what we're going to do. We're gonna give you a 10 page website, e-commerce. We're gonna do a first draft, a first revision, a second revision and a final revision. I said it earlier, or we're doing an SEO campaign and, and we're doing your LinkedIn and your Instagram. And then all of a sudden, because there has to be limits to, to everything, right? Your client basically doesn't adhere to the scope. They go outside of the scope. And I'll give you a kind of like another example here, a simple example, and you guys will get this. L let's just talk about websites. We build a site. They might be cool with the first draft, first revision, second revision, hit up our project manager and say, I want this custom illustration. I want you guys to create this custom and I want this custom and I want all this and I want you to add this and whoa, wait a minute. Wait, that's, that's a problem because that wasn't what we quoted out. That's something that out of the blue, they want us to, you know, have our graphic design people create custom illustrations. They want all this custom work on their site that wasn't part of the scope, that wasn't part of the proposal, that wasn't part of the deliverables can be a serious problem. Not knowing the limits of time and scope is really important because that will screw everything up. There are clients that want a half a million dollar website, but we quoted you out 700 bucks to build the site. The expectations were not set at the beginning. 
they totally were just not communicated with and they're expecting Airbnb or million dollar site. And that's not what they paid for. You might've charged them a hundred grand or 50 grand, but you only paid us 700 to do the site. You follow what I'm saying? So everything, there has to be communication. It's got to be etched in stone. You need to really, really think about this, about what I'm saying here and, and adhere to it. It's very important. Very important. That's why I, I touched on it for such a while. All right. Again, a lot of the stuff I'm touching on on every almost every slide. Keep the lines of communication open. One of the most important tips on our list, keeping the lines of communication open between you and your client can prevent misunderstandings and smooth feathers before they even get ruffled. As an agency owner, good communication cannot be overemphasized. You want to encourage over communication so that you and the client always know what is happening. Plus, your customers need to know they can reach you when required. The agency owner might get into a car accident or they're in the hospital. They never bothered to tell their client, hey, just in case something happens to me, here's, here's, here's a number where you could you know, reach me. That's great communication. That means you care. You care about the client. You care about the project. The lines of communication have to be open. This is now on the client, not even on the agency. Client disappears, man, you know, or the client doesn't respond. Client's not responding to the request. Hey, we have like 10 blogs here for you that need to be approved for us to place them on your site because this is an SEO campaign and you can't, you know, you can't, you can't mess with the momentum, right? Because we're creating all this content on a, on a monthly basis. And you always want to make sure that you don't lose that momentum because now it's like you're throwing it all out the window. SEO is all about momentum, 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 content, content, quality content. You got to post. If, if we're going to post, if you sold a campaign that's 30 posts you know, a, a month and we sent out the posts in a draft because we have a content calendar. Most of you might know that, but if you don't, that's, we, of course, we're going to give you a content calendar for that. You know, your project manager will have that all that there for you. We're going to say, hey, can you approve the, the titles here? These are first, it's the content calendar here. Here are the titles. This is what we're thinking about writing because we've done our homework. We've done our keyword research. We know your client. We've looked at their competition. We looked at everything and we know what their business is about. We know exactly what message needs to be produced out there because we are a marketing company. We do have amazing people on staff that really know social media, right? We have a whole social media department and, and we just want you to look at that document and okay it. So then that way, once you okay the topics that we're going to write about, we can come back and then provide the content for that actual social post. Then you guys are like, okay, that's what the, the social post content is going to look, is going to be approve that. Then we come back with the design, approve that, then it, then, then it's, and it's, it, it's posted. You follow? Everything has to be approved. But the point I'm saying is if the, the client is not responsive and or if the agency is not responsive, call the agency and be like, listen, can you call your client? I mean, what's going on? We're not getting a response here. If we didn't care, we wouldn't do that. But that's kind of going out of our scope of work. Why should we have to remind an agency or why should an agency have to remind a client that they got to get the information back to us at a certain date or, or be responsive when we post something in the project management platform that they need to respond. You can't leave your client hanging. Your client can't leave you hanging. And we certainly will never leave you hanging. That'll never happen. I can guarantee you that. That'll never happen. You guys know Rocket Driver. We're lightning speed when it comes to responses we will always respond. And if you do send us something and we don't respond, that means there's a problem. Uh, pick up the phone because there's an issue there. Maybe your email's not working. That happens a lot. Not a lot, but there are cases where agencies send us something to support or their email is tied to the project management system. And guess what? They forgot to pay their domain bill to GoDaddy. 
or some kind of misconfiguration in their DNS on their email. And guess what? They're sending us stuff. We're never getting it. A day goes by, two days go by, three days go by. How do we know? We have no idea that you're sending us anything. Eventually, the, the agency does call and we're, we're like, hey, no, we never got that. Um, there's definitely a problem on your end. So communication is the key to success. Lines of communication always need to be open. And it's all about everyone being on the same page, everyone being kept in the loop. And that's how a project flows. So going back, set the expectation up front of what the deliverables are going to be in the timelines for those deliverables. Like I said earlier, 48 hours for, you know, an intake form. And then another 48 hours when we receive their intake form, they're going to get a, you know, if it's SEO, do the keyword research. And after we get that, we're going to do the website overview of the actual client website, right? For optimization to see how they look to Google, to the search engines. We need that in 48 hours back to us so we can keep moving. If you don't conduct a meeting with your client, so let's just say that we're doing social campaigns, SEO campaigns, advertising campaigns. We're providing in the project management platform, your project manager will provide you with the reports to your project, um, be it a SEO report, be it a, 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 an advertising report. We are going to provide you with that. It's important for you to sit with the client and keep them in a loop because I already mentioned how important that is. You need to be proactive about this. It's don't take this for granted. Like, because you can go over what's going on in the report because the reports that we provide are really simple to understand. It, you know, like an SEO report is going to show them where they were with that keyword, where they are today. Um, we provide those reports. And if you have any questions about the reports, you can always ask your project manager and they'll be happy to answer any questions that you have before you even meet with the client. If you're if you have, um, if you need info, if you don't know what something means, it's not a problem. Your project manager will always be there for you. That's why they're your project manager to ensure that they are your right hand. They are your liaison to all the different departments that are working on one project. We always have multiple departments working on a project. When we're doing these marketing campaigns that include SEO and social media and press release, we have a content team, we have a social team, we have a graphics team, we have the SEO team. It's a lot of, lot of different departments all working together. Your project manager is your liaison. He will connect or she will connect with all of these different departments, compile the information, and then send it to you where you're dealing with one person and not five different departments, you follow? And it makes it really easy for you to manage, right? We manage it easily that way. It's easy for you to manage. It's easy for your clients to manage. So when the reports are available on a monthly basis, it's great for you to sit with the client and show them that you actually care. So, you know, reaffirm the expectations established at the start of the project. Hey, we, t we you know, here are the deliverables. Because when we provide you with the reports, you're going to have an activity sheet, it's called, that's provided to you where it shows you exactly what we've done, what's pending, what hasn't been done, what your client owes us, what they don't owe us. We even go one step even further. So not only are we communicating in the project management platform what we actually need from the client, but it's also in an activity sheet, um, a Google Doc that you just look at and you know exactly what's pending or, hey, it's all done. And there, here's the proof. This is everything that we've done. Everything is etched in stone. We are so transparent. It's ridiculous. There is no way that your client will say to you, well, this wasn't done or that wasn't done. No, it's all right there. So not only do we prove that the work is done, here are the results of the work. Month one, everything was completed on month one. Done. Sit with the client, talk to them about it. Remember, so during the conversation with the client, be sure to refer to the original goals for the project. And that way they, they understand that, hey, we delivered. Now it's time for month number two or month number three or month number four. Um, important to constantly meet with your clients. Keeps them really happy, shows that you care. Okay. Make sure you sign a contract. We do have contracts but we don't attest to the validity of the contract. We just put it up there as more of a template, as a guide. You don't have to have a contract. 
Have we ever had any problems with clients not paying agencies? Not really. It's never really happened. I think having a contract is really cool. It could be very simple. I think it should in include the project goals. It, can, it has to include the deliverables, the promises that you've made, the scope of the project, what's within or outside the limits, what's the post-sale process after the project has completed. I would put as much as you possibly could in there to protect you guys. This is what you paid for. This is what we're, what we're going to do for you on a monthly basis. And this is the scope of the project. If you're doing a website, put in there first draft, first revision, second revision, final revision. Anything after final revision, there will be, it have to be quoted out because it's going to depend based on um, what your client wants, right? What do they want to add after this final revision? I have clients, I know that I've looked at some projects, there's... <laughs> Which is fine. Hey, you know, um, I don't know if the agency or not mentioned to the client that after the final revision, if they want a revision, you know, if it's something simple, we'll do it. It's not a big deal. You know, that, that's okay. But I've seen projects and there's a couple that I've seen like yesterday that we've done a final revision, a second final revision and a third final revision. Guess what? They had to pay. On one of them, I noticed because the team brought it up to us and we even said, you shouldn't be paying for this. This isn't fair because your client is unrealistic, doesn't know what they want. And then that's between us, right? Between the agencies uh, and, and, and you, the agency with the project manager, we're always going to be upfront and honest and try to give you as much help as we can. But it seemed like the client didn't have a contract. I mean, the agency didn't have a contract. The agency never set the deliverables, goals, scope of work, limits, things like that. And ended up telling us, well, I, pay, I had to pay the second final revision out of my pocket. When it hurts you in the pocket, I guess you learn that way, right? The problem with this client, this, this agency is that they, they said, I had, I'm paying it for the second one. <laughs> Again, rarity, but I can guarantee you next time, they're not going to do that. Um, so just be careful. Again, it's a contract is to protect you. Reneging payments, like I said, is not really something. It's more about the scope of work. What are we doing on that project? What's inside, what's outside the limit of what we're going to do? What crazy thing that they come up with last minute and said, I want this done. And that wasn't on the contract. You could hold them to it. And there's really nothing they can say. It's an uncomfortable situation, but hey, you could rectify it. All of you are high, highly intelligent. And I'm sure that you can come up with a solid solution to make all sides happy. And we will always work with you on that. That's pretty much it here. I wanted to show you this message board right here. This is the project management platform. This here is where... We can have a private message board that we would create. The project manager can speak directly to the agency. You guys can go back and forth and that's cool. Then we can create another message board for the actual client that you have access to it. We have access to it and client has access to it. So when we post something, everybody gets it. Everyone's in the loop. So we have the communication down to a science. We've done so many projects. Um, not every project, special projects will have, will have um, roadmaps to it. Some of them do, some of them don't. This is a customized one that we've done for um, a client that is coming on board. Well, they came on board already. We're getting ready to start their projects. In the project management platform, we're giving the project timeline here. So they have an idea, project begins, Here's the key word. That's step one, right? Project begins. So they fill out the form. They get it back to us. Then there's the keyword research document. Then it goes to the website audit and we have an explanation. Then it goes to the content plan document. Then we are going to provide the weekly activity sheets, right? That outlines all off-page activities performed on their website um, or for social. 
um, anything. All the activity sheets are just everything that we're doing on the thing. Weekly ranking sheets. So if we're doing, again, SEO, um, list to target Google rankings and how they're performing on a weekly basis. Um, promotional content, depending on the project, we'll send you infographics, videos, if they're part of your project deliverables. Completion report, right? In-depth, extensive completion report outlining the progress of the milestone along with the invaluable recommendations we performed in the next milestone, right? So we have all of that in the docs and files section, right? Then we have um, frequently asked questions like, so let's say we're doing um, a SEO campaign, social media campaign, it's all done out of here. Um, you know, we place some simple information like how to set up Google Search Council and share admin access. So this is stuff that we need because we're, we need this information because we are going to pull reports from Google Search Council. Um, we're going to pull reports from Google Analytics. So we're going to need them to share the access with, again, us, white label email, Gmail, they're not going to know who it was, how to set up a, bit, a Facebook business profile. A lot of these businesses don't have one. How to, you know, set up their Instagram business profile, you know, uh, and just a couple of FAQs that we noticed that clients, you know, why do we need our clients assured feedback within 24 hours? What to do if the client doesn't like the content or the design? What's expected in the first 30 days? Why does it take SEO a long time to show results? Kind of like answering their questions before they even ask them, right? Again, simple questions. I get the, with the project management platform, there will always be communication in here, either through the message board, they'll send us a message through the message board and we'll respond, or it'll be inside of here. Now you have your to-dos, right? And I'm going off into a whole nother thing now. We're talking about something totally different than what this meeting was even about, but it's cool that I'm showing you this. But give me the example here, right? So this is kind of like where you can get the information and we could provide it for you when um, you know you have a proposal or you have a client. I wouldn't say proposal, but you have a client that you're ready to close. That we can because every 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 strategy is different. Every client's different. Proposals are different. They have different deliverables inside of them. Um, so it's important for you to um, let us know when you're like ready to close. Hey, I'm getting ready to sign a contract. Can you send me the deliverables? You know, um, and and and. Um, the timelines and all that stuff. And well, deliverables you have, you'll need the timeline. So here, easy. So inside of the, 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 the project management platform, the initial brief required information to download, right? This is where it starts. Download the form and upload it here within 48 hours. We're telling you already what needs to be done. You don't even have to tell them. You're just backing it up in the initial phase of your conversation with the client, right? That, that, that phase where you're setting expectation, hey, this is what we're gonna need from you. You need to follow these, th these timelines here or everything's gonna go to hell. It's gonna go the wrong way. We don't want that. So what, what does the client do? They download it, they fill out the required information and then bam, they come here and they just upload it. And now it's been uploaded inside of here, right? It's been uploaded in here. Well, what's the next step after that? It's the planning phase. Right. What happens in the planning phase? Well, you have after they, they submit the initial brief 48 hours later. Right. We're going to do the keyword research for that for that um, campaign, for that client. Right. What happens after that? We're going to do a website off um, a website audit after 48 hours after the approval of the keyword research. When will this website audit be completed? three to five days for the impl implementation of the website audit. We have to audit this. We have, it's, it takes time to audit a website. We're gonna run it through all this different technology software and we're gonna analyze it and come back with our recommendations of exactly what they need to do their, to their site before we start any type of SEO. Either they're gonna do it, we do some of it, Again, is that part, some, sometimes the website optimization is part of the actual campaign. Sometimes it's not, you know, really depends on which product, um, you know, what you sell to a client. Content plan, 48 hours after approval of the website audit, they're going to have their content plan. The content plan is going to have four blogs, five blogs, whatever it's going to be, social media posts, this and that. Kind of, it's kind of like a preliminary of, we kind of give them like a, a, a overview of the whole content plan and what, we, what, we're, what we're going to be doing with that plan. 
The next phase is the SEO phase to get the first contract, uh, first draft of the content. We just give you a first content draft so the client can look at the writing style. Did we hit the nail on the head with that writing style? Client likes it, they approve it, goes to the next stage, right? Blogs. Now we're going to start writing the blogs. It will complete it within three to five business days after the approval of the first content draft. We will publish the blog within three to five business days after the approval of the blogs. So what I'm trying to say is that we are on point. We, we do everything by the book. Everything we do is timeline, deliverables. These are the deliverables. So this one here is a, so if you've noticed, you go to these to-dos, this is an actual customized campaign that we're doing um, that we're going to be that we're going to start for a client, but we basically what we've done is we have everything here. So it, even if the client wants to know where the deliverables are, they just go to to dos and they'll see, hey, this is what's happening. You know, every everything that's uploaded. If, if you know, once these um, the, <clears throat> the uploads are here, once the content's approved, we'll share the artwork with the content for your review within forty two to seventy two hours, and we will schedule the publishing within seventy two hours. Right? Boom. Um, it's all here. We, we will up, so if we're, we're, if we're gonna share the artwork, the artwork is shared right here. 15 Facebook posts, we will share the artwork. All the 15 posts will be shared right here. Client will respond back to us inside of here. And okay, I like it or make some edits, great, done. And then we go on to the next step. And that's how the process is. It's really straightforward. It's very, very simple reporting. It will be shared in the last day of every month. So clients can ask, when do I get my reports? Well, just click on reports. You'll see that that's when you're going to get your reports. You're going to get your activity sheets. You know, this is when we've completed everything. This is the proof in the pudding. This is where you set the meeting with your client now, right? You know that when this is uploaded here, the reporting is uploaded, the activity sheets uploaded, then that's when you know it's time to meet with the client. The other thing I forgot to show you here is that we have some um, information on kind of like the reporting structure, kind of like what you're, you're going to see. And we, and what we do is we explain it. You know, these are the reports you'll see. Hey, these are the keywords before SEO. This is where you're ranking now. Every month it'll go down. We'll know the keywords. It wasn't ranked before. Not ranked means it was, you know, above 200. Page 200, whatever, gone, oblivion. And here it's like, hey, now you're here. You know, these, this will show you exactly where that client is. And that this, we're just giving you an idea. This is like a, just a brief scope of what it looks like. So just so your clients can have a, a, an overview. Another activity sheet, how many blogs, how many articles have we written for the, for the month? Sometimes we release this on a weekly basis if the client wants it. Sometimes it's too much. They don't want it every week. They want it on a monthly basis. Great. So we're going to tell you exactly where the blogs were placed, when were they placed, the dates, the, you know, if there were comments, if there was links, you know, the, how many links were built? Where were they built? Submission forms, you know, where were they submitted at? Articles, where were they written? The analytics data, you know, telling you, you know, the organic search, how it increased, where it was before, where it is now. So we break this all down for, for every client so they have an idea of what to expect. And this is really organized. So if you haven't seen this yet, this is how we operate. It's really awesome. And you have access to it. And everyone has that cut out. You can have your clients have access to it. But the bottom line is that we know what we're doing. We're successful because we're good. The tips that I gave you today are all to help take your agency to the next level. What I've shared with you today here in this marketing project is to put everyone at ease, those of you that have never sold a digital marketing project. And this is for all projects. This could be for a just a social media project. This could be for a web design project. This could be for a sales funnel project. It's all going to have pretty much the same format. And we're always there to answer your questions. Your project manager is your right arm. They're your teammate. We are a direct extension of your companies. We complement each other. You guys bring us the business. We compliment you. You compliment us. Your client compliments you. You get all the credit for it. And we love it. We don't want any credit. We just want you to get all the credit for it. And that's what makes the world go around, right? We all help each other out. Thanks again for you know being here. 
today. I really do appreciate all of you. If you have questions, hit us up at support rocket driver, and we'll be happy to answer them. Have a great evening. And I'll talk to you guys in a few. All right. Take care. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it.